Well, hi, family and friends of Grace Church and others that are viewing as well. Welcome to this uh, weekend of worship on the May 17th. And we're going to be celebrating uh, the remembrance of Christ's baptism. And then also our own baptism. As we think of the waters that uh, washed over us, uh, for some it might be a time of renewing that, and for others it might be considering uh, an opportunity to be baptized at some time. But we're so glad that you're here, and I pray that uh, this service will be uplifting to you as you worship the Lord. Join us in our call to worship. You are invited to come to Jesus, the fountain of life. Come to the streams of mercy and find forgiveness. Immerse yourself in the waters of healing. Be renewed by the eternal springs. Come walk beside the still waters. Be empowered by the rivers of justice. Come all who are yearning for meaning, hoping for truth, and thirsting for God. For in Christ you will find your thirst quenched and your joy renewed.
Well, I encourage you to, to pray with me. Uh, our Heavenly Father says that His throne of grace is open, and we can approach Him in boldness then as we pray. Mighty God, we're grateful for this day and for the blessings that we've received from Your hand, Lord. We're also grateful for things that have not come our way. Some of us want to say thank you, Lord, for not allowing a virus to hit us or to take us. And at the same time, though, we want to pray for those who are afflicted and the families who might be affected by that, Lord. We thank you that in this, in this day, Lord, there's a new opportunity to know you, to be known by you, uh, to love you, and then to have your love flow through us, Lord, to other people. Lord, I thank you for the family of faith that we all are a part of, that you include us in that. When we think about saints all around the world worshiping you on this weekend, uh, we happen to be a small gathering of that, Lord, and yet to know then that uh, we are a part of something even greater than ourselves, the kingdom of God here on earth, and then part of that great chorus that's in heaven even already, giving you praise, giving you honor, and people there already spending eternity with you, Lord. Thank you for then including us again by salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, Lord. Thank you for the price that you paid and allowing us to be forgiven, allowing us to have a right relationship with you. Lord, we know that there are many needs uh, within our church family, and so we're praying for healing for those who need that touch. We're praying for those who are making decisions, Lord. Would you guide them and give them wisdom? We're praying for those who are graduating, uh, those anticipating that, and we know that the celebrations will be so different than what they had anticipated to begin with. We pray for them, Lord. And we pray for your dreams that you placed upon them, Lord, to come to fruition as they take the next step in following you. Maybe that's to a trade school or maybe that's to a college or maybe even beyond that, Lord. And again, thank you, God, for families and thank you for uh, safety in this time. Uh, we pray then, Lord, that through this worship time, you would be honored and glorified and that somehow we would be drawn closer to you and then these moments will be meaningful, Lord, as you speak to us, as you speak through us. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, who then teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Today, I have a dandelion, and I know you've all seen dandelions growing in your yard. We think about a dandelion as just a weed, but did you know that it is a magnificent plant that God has made for us? We think about it only as a weed, but... The dandelion is very hardy. It can withstand dry weather and very, very hot weather. And what the dandelion does, and I dug up a couple from my yard today, it produces very long roots. These are just a couple of inches long, but a dandelion root can be 20 inches long, and the soil on top is dry, and the roots go so far down underground that they pull water so they're able to live even when it's very, very dry. And we as Christians can take some lessons from these dandelions. When we face hardships or difficulties in our life, who can we lean on and what can we do when things don't go right or we get sick? Or when we're faced with a difficult task, how can we stand firm in our faith? The answer is by being deeply rooted in God's Word and in our walk with Him. I want to read a Bible verse to you, and it comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. And it says, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. 
Their leaves stay green and they go right on producing delicious fruit. But did you know the dandelion teaches us something else about being a Christian? It ta- the dandelion spreads its seeds. And I know you have all pulled these dandelion seeds and blown on them and watched the seeds go where they may. And that is just what we need to do as Christians and tell other people and spread the good news of God. The best way to do that is to be deeply rooted in the Word of God. And children, I have two questions for you, and I want you to talk to these. Talk to your parents or your grandparents and answer these questions. The first question, as children, what are some difficulties you face when knowing the Word of God could help? And number two, besides reading the Bible, what are some other ways to grow deep spiritual roots? So let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and fold our hands and say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day, and help us to remember to spread your word, to be like the dandelion, and be deeply rooted in your word. Lord, we thank you for this day, and hopefully we'll be back soon. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we might too walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Well, hi, friends. Today I'm concluding our sermon series on the Son of God, the life of Jesus in you. And today we're focusing on Jesus' baptism and your baptism. Our key verse, as Nate read for us earlier, is from Romans 6, and I'm going to cue in on verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God the Father, we too may have new life. Well, let me remind us of Jesus' baptism. You can read about it in Matthew chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Jesus then came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I've often pondered when I was uh, uh, early, early on in my Christian journey, like, why was Jesus baptized at all? After all, he had never sinned, and when you and I are baptized, we're baptized for the forgiveness of our sin, to be washed away, to be cleansed, to recognize that, yes, I I die to my sin and my old self, and I come back to life in Christ as I come out of the water, as the water passes over me. So what does that mean for Jesus? Why did he go through baptism? Well, I believe that the biggest reason that we discover from theologians and just from the passage itself is that he was not baptized for the repentance of sin, but to identify with you and me, sinful humanity. And Jesus wanted to say, this is important. It's something that he underwent, it's something that we should undergo as well. Uh, Perhaps you want to uh, um, reacquaint yourself with Jesus' baptism, and if you are available to a a video or a DVD of the life of Jesus, you might want to cue in on, on that part Uh, where Jesus is baptized by John and that wonderful experience where the heavens are open and he hears that wonderful voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I wonder if you remember those words at your baptism. Perhaps not. Perhaps you were an infant. Perhaps you were a teenager or it was just a little bit too long ago to recall, but maybe it's very fresh in your mind still. And I hope that that was something special and meaningful to you. In fact, today we're going to be reaffirming our baptism in just a little while. Uh, And so you might want to get some water ready, whether it's a bowl of water or a pitcher of water, even a glass of water, um, just to to be mindful of what what your washing of sin and your identification with Christ really means. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, we read that if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. Everything old has passed away, and see or behold, everything has become new. Isn't that neat to know? Embrace that for a moment, that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old things in your life, your past, things you've done, things you've said, mistakes you've made, sins you've committed, uh, things you want to (laughs) forget, things you, you regret, it's passed away. In fact, what God sees now is Jesus living inside of you, his righteous son. And so the old is passed away, and what he sees now is the new, and Jesus recreating you and me. That's a great thing to know, that every day I am being made renewed, uh, 
made new and renewed by the Spirit of God working and living inside of me. Well, then, just to remind us, why, what is, why is it essential to be baptized? What's behind it all? Well, I want to share with you four, four reasons to be baptized. Four reasons that make it meaningful. Here's the first. We ought to be baptized because Jesus demonstrated it. That's right. In fact, with his baptism, as he said, is to, to fulfill all righteousness so that he might be leading the path of what it is to be a follower, what it is to be obedient to God. Jesus demonstrated that. There he was submitting himself to John and John's ministry at the Jordan River. You and I then ought to follow in that because Jesus demonstrated it. A second reason to be, to be baptized is that because Jesus commanded it. We read about that in Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 19. This passage is also called the Great Commission. That is the great standard, the great commandment that Jesus is giving to us to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, it's recognizing that it's not just the water baptism, but it's a spiritual event happening to us as well. Jesus recreating us, remaking us, allowing us to then stand righteous before God and then live holy and live in obedience. Jesus demonstrated it. Jesus commanded it. And a third reason to be baptized it is our public statement. Baptism is your public statement that you belong to Jesus Christ. Not only do you believe in Jesus, but it says you belong to Jesus. Uh, I think about uh, Acts chapter 8, where Philip has an encounter, Philip being one of the apostles of Jesus, has an encounter with uh, a, a eunuch, perhaps somebody of the court, um, who has an experience and hears the good news, responds to it, and wants to know what's the next step. And Philip says, well, let's, let's get you baptized. Uh, let's make a public profession of your faith so that all who are with you in this company that was with him might know, might respond to it as well, to see a, a public uh, testimony of your belonging to Jesus. When you were baptized, whether it was your parents presenting you, whether you presented yourself, whether it was done in a church service, whether it was done in somebody's swimming pool or out at the creek, there was a public profession being made that you're willing to say, Jesus took a stand for me, I want to take a stand for him. Jesus was willing to die for me and to rise again. I want to identify with his death, dead to my sins, and then alive in Christ as well. It's a public statement. There's a passage in the Bible that says, Jesus, Jesus saying that if you will profess me publicly before others, then I will profess you before my Father in heaven. But if you will deny me, then, then I will deny you, and I won't make you known to my Father. There's something about making a public statement this way, uh, of sharing the joy and the wonder that you have because you are a follower of Christ, because you want to say, he's mine, I'm his, I belong to him. Jesus demonstrated baptism. Jesus commanded baptism. It's our public statement when we undergo baptism. And a fourth reason to be baptized is that it's a symbol of incorporation into the family of God. I believe, I believe in Jesus and so he claims me, and I make a public testimony of that. But then it also says, but I belong to something bigger than just myself. And Jesus said we become a part of his church, his family, the kingdom of God here on earth. And you and I are members of that. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that we were all baptized into one body, and we are all members of that through the Spirit. Romans 10 verse 9 reads that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, then we are saved. We are saved. And we are a part then of God's family. We believe and then we get to belong. Isn't that neat to know? That not only am I believing the right things, but God says while I'm here on earth, I get to belong to something bigger than myself. A family a family of God. And, and that's the wonderful thing about belonging to a church family. I encourage you that if you're not connected, please get connected. A grace is just one of those great church families here in Gallup Police. But wherever you're at listening to this, get connected with other believers uh, by becoming a part of a local church. Sometimes it takes a little time to, to get 
uh, to feel things out, and you might want to spend time with some of the leaders and getting to know what does this church stand for, what do they believe, uh, how do they view Scripture as authority, and then because you're all believing, then start to belong as well and start to make friends and grow in your relationship with Christ. You have gifts to offer. They have gifts to offer as well. And uh, that was a little bit of last week's message too, that we have ministry each to perform in the body of Christ. Jesus was baptized. He demonstrated it. Jesus commanded it when he said, go and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's our public statement when we profess Jesus and undergo baptism uh, within, a, within a context of a fellowship. And then it, we recognize that it allows us to become part of the family of God. Let me ask you a few questions as we conclude then with this message. When did you accept Jesus as your Savior? Think about that for a moment. Were you a child? Were you a young adult? Maybe you waited until later on in life. Where were you when you made that decision? Perhaps it was just in the quiet of your bedroom one, one night, thinking aloud, like, Lord, do you really exist? And if you do, then, then I want to know you, and I invite you into my life. Maybe it was at a church service. Maybe it was at an altar. Maybe it was at summer camp. For some, it might be even on the highway when they're driving, and they, and they witness something that really stirs them. For some, it's been even this experience that we've been having with uh, this worldwide uh, uh, virus. For some, it's got them really thinking, wow, is there anything bigger than all of this? And how do I fit in the midst of the plan while I'm here on earth? What is my purpose and what is my meaning? And it's turned a lot of people back to God. So there is something redeeming that's happening even now. Now, if you haven't made that decision to make Jesus your Lord, what are you waiting for? What's stopping you? And how can a friend or how can a pastor or another person help you? Uh, we want you to know. And if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask them. Uh, even if you have doubts, uh, when you ask about it, you get to flesh those doubts out and get some responses to it. I wonder also, have you been baptized? What was that experience like for you? Was it because you made a personal decision to place your faith in Christ? Was it because your family uh, brought you into the church family through baptism? Well, I hope you'll be able to share your story with somebody else, uh, whether it's a family member there at home or maybe to call a, a, a good friend of yours to say, hey, I just want to share my story with you. And um, uh, you'll find that that's a rewarding time. It reaffirms your faith when you do share with somebody else. What does your baptism mean to you? Like I said in a moment here, I'm going to uh, do a reaffirmation of baptism. Now, if you're at home thinking, you know, I've never been baptized before and I'd like to be sometime, then call us here at Grace Church or call your pastor or call another church uh, to make that happen. I always encourage people here at Grace Church and every church I've served to do it within a fellowship of others, not to be a private personal ceremony, but again, a public testimony. And whether that's done in front of a whole congregation or a handful of people that go to somebody's pond or go to somebody's pool, again, there's an opportunity for you to profess your faith publicly, to take a stand for Jesus because he took a stand for you. But if you have been baptized, then I just want to do a little bit of affirmation with that, uh, to recognize you, because maybe you didn't hear at your baptism God say to you, this is my beloved child with whom I'm well pleased. And that's part of it. Uh, when we undergo that commandment of Jesus and respond in obedience to say, Lord, you underwent it for righteousness sake. You command it. It allows me to be a part of who you are and identifying as a new being in Christ and allows me to be a part of your family. Lord, I want to I want to reaffirm that. So Pastor Nate's going to help me with this. And again, at home, uh, just get a bowl of water or a pitcher or... Whatever you might have available to you. I would not recommend Coca-Cola. That's really sticky. Don't use that. But use some water. Uh, and there's no such thing as holy water per se. It's whatever we dedicate to the Lord becomes holy. Our bodies, ourselves, our lives, our homes. Uh, and even water in this case. Many times Jesus used water. And throughout the Bible you read about it. At the very beginning in, in Genesis chapter 1. It says the Spirit of God hovered 
over creation and over the waters of the earth. And from that chaos, God brought order. Well, I pray that through your baptism and reaffirmation, God brings order for you in the midst of any chaos you're going through. We remember uh, the people of Israel coming through the waters of the Red Sea after coming out of Egypt and in, 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 after coming out of Egypt and the bondage there, uh, Moses was leading the people and he led them through the waters. And from that, God parted the waters of trouble and allowed the people to pass through safely. Again, later on under, under Joshua's leadership, the people of Israel came to the Jordan River at flood stage. How are they gonna cross it? Once again, God did another miracle. He parted the water so that they could go through. And I pray that any challenges you're going through right now, God will part the waters for you to allow you to safely pass through. And then of course, Jesus' own baptism. When there he heard the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. I pray that you hear those words today. Well, again, with what water you might have at home, that's just a little exercise to do, but to be mindful and to be thankful. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for baptizing me, for including me in your family. And if you want to, you just touch the water. You can make the sign of a cross on the back of your hand or on your forehead or allow another family member to do that with you. Uh, Nate and I are gonna demonstrate that a little bit here. How would you like to receive it? The forehead, please. All right. Well, Nate, you are a child of God, beloved in whom he is well pleased. You are crucified with Christ, dead to your sin, but alive with Jesus in his resurrection. Amen. What would you like to receive? Right on top. Ray, in this moment, remember what life was like before mm. Christ and the transition during yes. and after Christ. Thank you, Lord. In this moment, would you feel um, that excitement of life again that Jesus brings to you and hear it, God say, you are mine mm -hmm. and I am well pleased. Mm. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for including us in your family, for making a way for us by you becoming the way, the truth, and the life. You becoming that sacrifice for our sin, for my sin, Lord. Thank you that in dying, then we are dead too to sin. But in your resurrection, we are now alive. And baptism reminds us of all that, Lord, going under the water, beneath the waters, dying to ourselves and then rising again. Thank you for new life. Lord, and allow us by your Holy Spirit to live lives of righteousness and to fulfill righteousness just as Jesus did. All for your glory and all for your name we pray. Amen.